this video, we are going to learn how to use Bootstrap's grid system. And what that means is we are going to be working with containers, rows, and columns. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Uh, so we've got our starter template project that we've been working on here. We've got our Bootstrap and our CSS uh, injected into our project. And let's go ahead and start working uh, with the grid system. As we've talked about, Bootstrap has loads of classes with predefined stylings to them. And the first thing we're going to learn about is containers. All right. And there's two kinds of containers that you can use in Bootstrap. The first one is just a standard container. And then the second one is a container fluid. And when we're building with Bootstrap and we're using their default grid system, you have to use these containers, all right, uh, for Bootstrap's grid system to work properly in your project. So let's go ahead and uh, create our container. Uh, give us some space here. Create a div tag. I don't know why it's highlighting that. It's probably brackets trying to be helpful, but it's not. And we're just going to create a container and close it off there. So sweet. So this is our uh, first type of container that we can build. So come into our CSS file here and go ahead and grab the container class. And let's go ahead and add a uh, background color. Go ahead and type this in. All right. So we're going to set it. Uh, to this purple color here. So 6C to EB9. All right, and then go ahead and give it a height. We'll just put um, 5REM. Okay, so that's great. So now we've got a container showing up so you can see what it's doing here. So regular containers. Uh, are going to have a max width on them, and they're going to have specific breakpoints uh, uh, for different sized viewports. You can see that it has a margin of auto here, so that way it puts the container in the center. And then as you can see, the regular container Bootstrap has built specific breakpoints at screen sizes. So you can see as the screen gets smaller here, like for an iPad or something, um, it's going to break, break, and then obviously once it gets to a mobile, uh, size like on a phone, it's going to take up 100% uh, of the viewport because that would be goofy to have it on a phone and have some margin here on the sides. Doesn't make sense. So that is a regular container. Like I said, it has a maxed width on it. And go back to uh, brackets here. And let's change this now to a container fluid. Okay. And we'll talk about what a container fluid is. And be sure to change it in your project here as well. So what a container fluid does is it's based on a percentage, all right? And it's based on 100% width, and it takes up the entire uh, width of the viewport at all times. So if we go back to our example here, let me refresh this. You can see that it takes up 100%, and it doesn't matter what size the screen is. It's always going to be at 100% here. So that's containers, and remember you have to use one of these two containers when you're building uh, with Bootstrap, okay? So let's talk about the next component to this. So when we have our container, uh, to build our grid system, we're going to be using rows and columns, okay? So a row is going to be like this horizontal uh, container that takes up the entire viewport, the entire width of the viewport. So to create a row, Let's come inside of our container and just uh, create a div class of row. And remember, these classes are already defined in Bootstrap. So they're going to have like a little bit of padding in them, maybe some margins, just depending on what class we're going to throw in our element. All right. And then so we can see our row. Uh, save this. Let's dive into our CSS. And let's create a row class. And we're going to give it a background color. I've picked specific colors that I thought looked awesome together. So I want to make sure I'm using them. And this is FF9232. So now we've got a background color. And let's go ahead and give this a height as well. Oh. And we're going to give this one of like 4.7 REM. Okay. 
And the reason I'm doing this, the reason why I'm giving it a height is because it's just for demonstration purposes. Because rows and the containers, by nature, they're going to inherit a height of whatever the content that is in them. Okay, And because we want to see the containers, rows, and columns we're using, we're just giving it a default height here. And I made this one a little bit smaller so that you can see how it nests inside of the container here. So now we've got our background color and we have a height here. Okay, So let's go ahead and check that out over here. And you can see that we've got a row, which like I discussed, takes up 100% width of the viewport. All right, so back to brackets. Now let's talk about columns here, all right? Um, when we're working with rows and columns, columns are the only element that can be an immediate child of a row, okay? You can't put anything else in a row uh, before you start um, with a column, like you have to start with a column to put content in it. Columns are the only only class, the only element that we can use here to add our content to. Okay, if you try to put stuff inside of rows, it's it's not going to flex properly with the grid system that Bootstrap has built. Now, Bootstrap has this extra syntax that we can actually add to our classes to help set the widths on different sizes of viewports. And what I mean is we can add a syntax uh, that covers a small, medium, large, and extra large viewport. So to demonstrate this, let's go ahead and add our first column. So create a div tag, and then we're going to add a class of call. So this is going to give us our column class. And then at this point, this is where we're going to set the size of the view, viewport, whether it's a small, medium, large, or extra large. So in this example, I'm going to choose a small. Uh, so it's going to take a small viewport. And we're going to set this to a screen size of 6, or a width of 6. Okay, And there we go. Now so that we can see this column show up in a row, let's jump over to our CSS and add some uh, style to it. All right, so we're going to use um, our attribute selector. Just put some, uh, some square brackets. And we're going to grab the class um, that's in our element. And remember this uh, asterisk sign, this is grabbing all the elements that are equal to call with the dash. So what this has done here, remember, is it's grabbed every single one of our column classes, which start with this. And now we can add a uh, style property to it. So we're going to say that the uh, background color, it's going to be this uh, kind of turquoise color. And this is a 00C3AA. And then let's go ahead and add a height to it. And we're just going to put like 4.2 REM. All right. Let's go ahead and add a border to this. And I'm going to kind of make this a transparent border uh, so that we can see the columns, uh, how they're split up. So we are going to make this, let's make this two pixels. And then we're going to kind of use a transparent color. So to do that, we do our RGBA, parentheses, 0, 0, uh, 0, and I guess it's 0 0.3. And I'm just going to go ahead and space these right here. Oh, and we have to write like it's a solid. And end it with our thing here. Let me see if I did this right. Oh, got a typo. You guys probably already caught that. All right, cool. Now it's highlighted. So we've got a border of two pixels uh, that's solid. And then we're adding this uh, kind of transparent color to it, OK? So let's go ahead and check this out and jump over to our HTML. So we added a column width of 6. OK, let me refresh this. And you can see that our column showed up as a 6, OK? Now let me explain something here. So. And uh, obviously, you can see that it took up half the screen because 6 plus 6 is 12, right? We're working with columns of 12. That's how the grid system works. Uh, jumping back over to our text editor, uh, back to the HTML. So remember how we said everything that's a small viewport and larger is going to have a column width of 6. So let me show you how that works. Now, when this, there is actually an extra screen uh, size, which is an extra small. But Bootstrap, what they've done is anytime the viewport hits an extra small size, uh, which is like a mobile phone, for an example, it automatically is going to change the column width to 12. 
it's going to stretch it out across the entire display. Uh, that way the content doesn't get smashed and look funky. All right, so let's go ahead and shrink our viewport and kind of see what happens. So we're probably at an extra large uh, state here, and then we've shrunk down to a large. We've probably hit a medium here, and here's a small, and then there. Now it's hit the extra small, and you can see that it just jumped to 100% to that 12, uh, that column width of 12. Now you're probably like, oh, well, Jason, that's not that cool. Well, let's make it cool <laughs> and get some different examples here. So I'm copying this column and I'm just making a second column. So now we've got a full column width of 12, which is two columns here. So, and you can see how the columns stacked on each other when it's at an extra small viewport. Go ahead and enlarge this and you can see that it's a column here of six, column width of six. All right, let's create some uh, more columns and rows here that we can work with. So let's, let's leave these first two columns in our row here. And I'm just going to write uh, column one and, uh, oops, and column two. Uh, that way it kind of gives it a label and we can see what's going on. So we've created this first row. Now, we've already put a full column width of six in here. So we can't add any more columns to this because we've already equaled our full width of 12. So what we need to do is create a new row. So go ahead and create another div class, grab the row, open that up, and this time, let's see, we're gonna add three rows in here. So let's, let's do a div class of column, and then for this example, let's start out with a, a large. I'm, I'm gonna show you some cool things we can do here. We're gonna start with a large column of four, Okay, and go ahead and actually let's create this. The reason I did it by a column width of four is because four plus four plus four is uh, 12. Copy that again. I have something gnarly happening here. Okay, do that and this. Cool, so let's go ahead and call this uh, column three column four and column five. All right, so switch back over uh, to our editor here, or our web page, and you can see that we've got these three extra columns here. Now, I'm gonna show you how we can actually change the column width of these uh, when we hit uh, smaller viewports. So go back to your text editor, and in front of these, I'm gonna hold Command, Control on a Windows computer, uh, but I'm gonna hold command and I'm gonna click in front of all these so I can select all columns and then just write in column and then we're gonna do a small then add a dash and then a space and then we're gonna go ahead and add our numbers in here so right now we're saying hey when this is in a large viewport or higher go ahead and set the column width to four however when it's small um, set the first row to six or the first column to six the second column to six and this uh, third column here uh, I want it to go ahead and uh, be set to 12. Let's put in some numbers here real fast. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do the same technique and just do column. And then we'll come into here and go 3, 4, and 5. Right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Perfect. All right. Now we'll come over here. All right. So in our large viewport or higher, it's going to be a column width of 3. And then as you see, when this shrinks, and hits that small uh, viewport, we just hit the um, two columns that we set to be a width of six, and then that fifth column we says, hey, go ahead and set a width to 12 and take up the entire viewport. All right, pretty cool stuff. Just collapses there. All right, so that's pretty cool. Now let me show you something else uh, that you can do. So now that we kind of understand how we can add this extra syntax here, um, let me just go through and show you what every single one of them look like. So this one right here is going to be a small, and then you'd go ahead and write in medium, large, extra large, just like the uh, t-shirts, the right? Just like your shirt. So pretty, pretty standard. All right. Now another thing that we can do is instead of changing these column widths based on the, uh, the size of the viewport, if we wanted, we could go ahead and say, hey, I want these column widths to be this size 
across the board on every single uh, viewport. Bootstrap, by default, anytime the screen gets extra small, it, uh, it makes your columns a width of 12, takes up the entire width. So to kind of override that if you'd like, you can actually just get rid of the small and just say a column width of six and uh, we'll go ahead and save that. And let me show you what happens to these two columns. Now we're saying, hey, these two columns, regardless of what the viewport size is, we always want two columns here, a width of six. So if we shrink this down, even when it gets to this extra small state, you can see that it still leaves the two columns. Now, use this sparingly, okay? It's always important to be specific uh, when we're building our, our web pages, just like I said, you gotta be specific in your CSS, you gotta be specific in your HTML, because if these boxes are loaded with content and it gets to this extra small state, um, your content might overflow and you may not want that to happen and things can get smashed. So I've always found it is a good practice to be specific and use the small, medium, or large state. Now most of the time, um, I just use a small. I start with the small so I can take that class uh, of width and use it across the board with small, medium, large, and extra large, and just let Bootstrap auto collapse it for me on an extra small screen. Um, but that's up to you. So um, that's it. Uh, this is rows and columns. Uh, you build columns inside of rows, period. There's one more thing that I'm going to show you here, and I'm going to show you that you can actually build rows and columns inside of a column. So let me go ahead and demonstrate that for you. So we can actually go ahead and let's just take this column width of six here and check this out. I'm gonna get rid of this uh, here. Let's get rid of the text. And then inside of the uh, column, we can put our content, right? Uh, well, we can also nest more rows. So let's do a div class and give it class of row. All right, open that up. And remember, we can only nest columns inside of here. So let's give it a div class of column. And why don't we go ahead and do this? And we'll go ahead and uh, just do that. Now let's see what happens here. Check that out. So we have put a row with a column inside of it. And this is cool because in the first row, we put two columns with a width of six. And now in here, I'm putting another row with a column width of six. So now uh, you can see that it's taking up half of the half column that we have, right? The six column and we put another width of a six in here. So you can do things like this. And I'm gonna go ahead and Let's do this and then what else? We can do a two and a four. This is gonna equal up six. The other half, so we've got six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, right? And go in here, I'm gonna refresh it. And there you go. We've got our width of six and then a two and a four. That is the grid system, containers, rows, and columns. Um, let's move on. Oh, <laughs> oh,